You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul, and with me today is Mr. Haya Costello from Drone DJ. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? Thank you very much. Doing well, doing well. How are you? Where are you? What's going on? Um, I'm still traveling throughout Europe. We're in uh, Germany right now, but that really doesn't matter since everything is taking place online anyway. Uh, so we have the latest drone news for you this week, and I think we should start off with Gatwick because that story is still not over yet. It's actually fascinating how drones have really become the scapegoat of the aviation industry, Haya. I mean, just last week on the show, we were talking about how allegedly a drone had been spotted at Gatwick Airport and essentially had shut down air traffic at the airport for multiple hours on end over multiple days. Even a couple was arrested for allegedly flying said drone. And it's really interesting because said drone ended up being something much more benign. What was it, Haya? Yeah, it, 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 it's really getting uh, uh, crazy, basically. It's uh, the most bizarre story I've heard uh, since uh, covering drones. Uh, this all started last Wednesday when uh, the drone supposedly was first uh, spotted, and then it rolled on to Thursday and Friday. I think there had been like 67 sightings of drones. Uh, as you said, that couple was arrested. Um, at that point, still no drone had been really uh, found or no proof, no evidence had been submitted. The couple was released on Sunday, and at that point, the Sussex police started saying, well, we're not quite sure if there even was a drone involved. And of course, that raised many, many eyebrows, uh, not just in England, but uh, I think in the drone industry as well. Uh, right now, they think it may have been the lights of cranes. You know those, those lights on top of cranes to, uh, to mark them uh, for, for airplanes? They think people may have mistaken those lights for drones, which... Um, makes this a ridiculous story, especially when you consider that about 140,000 uh, travelers had been affected right before the holiday travel. Uh, it's about a thousand flights that either were canceled or diverted. Goes to this, show that overthinking can hurt more than just yourself, but all 140,000 people around you. It's this is this is a huge mess basically, and uh, if they uh, if there really is no drone anywhere to be found, then I don't know. It's uh, it's crazy how this got so out of hand. Well, in other drone news, it seems like the Aeromexico flight may have been a victim of drone hysteria as well, and drones may have been the scapegoat there as well, as we're learning that it may have been a maintenance issue that just caused the radome to collapse. And for you listeners out there who are not familiar with the 737 radome, essentially it's the nose of the aircraft that's built more out of like carbon fiber and fiberglass. It's not uh, encased in metal because the radar from the aircraft sits inside of the radome. Every pilot out there knows it's about as thick as an eggshell and can break very easily. It seems like the authorities have not found any parts and it seems like they're sending the radome up to Boeing itself, which I was really interested because, you know, we just got back from the NTSB training and we know a lot of the NTSB agents out there and I was asking them, how come you're in Mexico working a crash? This doesn't really seem very uh, like a good allocation of resources for the United States. And he said, oh, well, it's because it's a Boeing plane. It's an American plane. That's why they had American investigators go down there and try to figure out if it was a drone strike or not. And it looks like right now all leads are pointing to not a drone. So really excited about that as well. But it goes to show, Haya, hysteria is really crazy over this holiday season. Yeah, for sure. Drones are uh, an easy victim. If people don't quite know what it is, then uh, why not come up with an interesting drone story, right? Next one we have for you is uh, FCC filings. Uh, There's been two FCC filings that were made public uh, yesterday. Now, of course, most of the real interesting information is still under a secrecy cycle for at least 45 days. Uh, So we won't know exactly what the specs are going to be, but there is a new version, version 2, of the Matrice series drones. So there's going to be an M200 version 2, an M210, and an M210 RTK version 2, as well as a new remote controller called the Cedens S. 
We don't quite know when to expect these. Typically in the past, DJI did not make a real big deal out of version two product releases. We may expect these to show up during NAB in April. Uh, it could also just be a soft release, like what they've done with the uh, Mavic 2 Enterprise Duo that was released about a week ago. Um, so these, we know these new drones are coming for the uh, specs. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait until we get more information on that, unfortunately. So 45 days puts us at about mid-February. Do you think that DJI could release this information maybe at an early Airworks? Because didn't they do an Airworks last year in Denver in April? Yeah, but I haven't heard anything about an Airworks convention being set up in 2019 that early, so I, I wouldn't expect that. Um, I think, if anything, it may be a soft release in February or March. Um, I don't think they're going to make a big deal out of a version 2 product release, but then again, with DJI, you you never really know for sure. Uh, it may be delayed for all we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we never know. Well, what other news do we have in the drone industry this week? Uh, there was an article in the uh, Wall Street Journal yesterday about Project Wing in Australia. As you uh, probably know, in Canberra, Australia, they've been testing uh, the drone from Google Alphabet uh, to make deliveries. So they've delivered coffee, they delivered burritos, and now they've had about 2,000 flights. Now, this is a uh, vertically land and uh, take off as well as fly horizontally. So it has about 12 propellers, and it actually makes quite a bit of noise. So the most common complaint that people have had during these testing uh, periods is just the noise of the drone. And one of the things they uh, they learned at this uh, Project Wing is that if you have the drone flying the same approach routes over the same houses time and time again, uh, it ends up being quite a nuisance for the people who live there. So they're making some adjustments uh, in the flight paths. They're trying to make those drones more quiet as well. Um, but these are some of the learnings that they've uh, had as a result of this test. It's very interesting that you say that because in an interview with Elon Musk, he once said that he believes that flying cars won't actually happen because of the sound that they create over adjacent houses, and which was the basis of his decision to go below LA for his tunnel with the Tesla vehicles. Now, that being said, that's really interesting because I didn't think there was much weight or gravity to that statement whatsoever, but it seems like it's becoming quite a significant issue. I mean, in Australia, I would reckon that people are a lot more laid back as well. Well, so for that to be an issue in general, well, it may be more of a significant issue than I or others give credence to. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do think that with this drone, I mean, we've seen that, of course, with the, uh, the different DJI products as well. You can change the design of the propellers. I mean, there's different ways to make drones more quiet. So I'm sure that from a design perspective, there's probably some room for improvement as well. Uh, like what they've done here as well, changing the flight paths, being smart and not flying over the same house again and again. Those could be ways to improve it. But um, yeah, these are testing phases. Now, I don't know if the Finnish people are as laid back as the Australians, but maybe we'll, uh, we'll get some different results from those tests. Who knows? Should be interesting. But it also segues into our other news this week, which has more to do with the tsunami that hit Indonesia. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Uh, Anna Krakatau, it's a small little volcanic uh, island. It actually, I think it's about 100 years ago, the whole island blew up with one of the biggest uh, volcanic explosions, at least in the last 100 years. Uh, that volcano has always been active since, and now part of the crater collapsed and caused a tsunami that hit Sumatra and Java. And now there are about um, six villages where typically you would get to by road. Uh, the road now is inaccessible and they've been using drones to look for victims of the tsunami. It was a wave about 15 feet high and went as far inland as a kilometer. Uh, so let's say a little bit more than half a mile. Of course, a terrible uh, tragedy. Um, from a drone perspective, it's good to see that drones now around the world seem to become part of a standard uh, first responders toolkit. And I think that makes a lot of sense. I couldn't agree more. It's fantastic that drones are being used for good, especially around the holiday season where Christmas and the New Year is upon us. And it's very sad um, to hear that these tragedies happen, but they are natural occurrences. And the better we can be prepared and the better we can use technology to help others, the better off humanity is as a whole. So what other news do you have for us this week, Haya? This is it. Um, this is all the news we have in this Christmas uh, week. Uh, a lot of articles were still dealing with the whole Gatwick situation. 
um, pretty much overruling all, all the other news. Um, so we'll be back next week, hopefully with a lot more for you guys. Yes. Uh, in fact, there is one last piece of news I forgot to mention, and that is because of the government shutdown, there are a couple of interesting scenarios going on with drone pilots around the United States. And one of those scenarios is if you're up for renewal on your Part 107 RPIC certificate, then you're going to find that you're not actually going to be able to take the federal test as federal testing centers are not being supported over the government shutdown. It also means that national parks are closed and we're seeing instances of drone pilots flying from outside of national parks and into the airspace, which is legal in accordance with the written rule. You know, a lot of people have confused that rule with you can't take off and land from inside national parks which is true, but you can take off from outside of the national park and fly in. So this is, uh, this is an opportunity for a lot of drone pilots. And I know some, uh, I mentioned this on a couple forums, which upset some people. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, it's just one of those really interesting occurrences that offers an opportunity. I agree. I agree. Um, but yeah, so I think this for 2007, um, yeah, 2018, this is the last show of the year, isn't it? We'll be it back is. To- Year. It is the last news show of 2018, and oh, yeah. um, it looks like we will be filming again next Thursday, and then after that we'll be at CES. So really excited for those shows to come. Really excited to see what comes in the new year. Do you have any goals for this new year, Haya, as a as a uh, pilot, as a writer? Yeah, I'd like to uh, to get out more and fly more. Actually, I mean, I find with covering drones and, and writing articles, a lot of time is uh, is spent behind a computer. Uh, one of my goals is definitely to get out more and fly my drones more often than I've been able to in the last couple of months. Well, I will hold you accountable because I need to do the same thing. I've been teaching so many in-depth classes. My mind has been running in circles, and I need to go out and uh, and retain the flow state of flying again myself. But Haya, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, new show this week. I'm excited for 2019, excited to see you at CES. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, guys, that's going to do it for our show today with Haya Costello from Drone DJ. Check him out at DroneDJ.com. And thanks again for listening to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. (laughs) 